Hello, my name is Buddy Childress and I'm Executive Director of Needles Eye Ministries. We are really happy to have you with us today for our monthly speaker series. We hope you enjoy it. Good afternoon and thank you for coming. Uh, we live in a busy world, don't we? It's sometimes very difficult to find the time to go to a Needles Eye luncheon or any kind of a luncheon. The last 15 years that I was in practice, my whole dental team and I made the Needles Eye luncheons. And it was really significant that we did. But we also found that on those days, we were particularly busier, or it appeared to be, than we were on other days. And we had to decide to make the time. And the days that we were so busy that it would have been very easy to have said, we can't get there today, were the days that we really needed to be there. And when we sucked it up and got there, we were blessed. And I was blessed to have the whole staff together with me. Uh, on, uh, needless I gave us an opportunity as a staff to grow together. My staff was, was solid for, for the last 15 years. I think one person moved away out of town, but all the rest were there, and it was just great to have that unity. But, it, but we were also spiritually lifted to another level, and I, a lot of it was due to the fact that we were hearing the same things in Needless Eye, and it gave us an opportunity to repeat and talk and question about things that, that we'd heard. So uh, that is just a, a great opportunity for you. We were, we were able to pray with patience when, when, the, when, it was, when it, the right time came. Uh, and patients sometimes would come in and say, Doc, before you check my teeth, I need a prayer. And that was a wonderful opportunity. And all the girls who were, we were all in the same place. We were all on the same stage. And it was just great to be able to do that. And also, I think our relationship between each other improved. Uh, we were more loving. We had more understanding. We had more care for each other. Um, for example, instead of the girls that they used to say, boy, he's in a bad mood today, they would say, Dr. Pryor, is something bothering you? Can I pray with you? Well, if you're in a bad mood and somebody prays with you, it kind of diffuses that uh, very quickly. Of course, the girls were never in a bad mood, so it didn't apply to them. <laughs> Over the last 32-plus uh, years that Needless Eye Ministry um, has presented the speaker series, many, many people have spoken. All different. No two presentations the same. But a common thread joins all these together, and that common thread is Jesus Christ. In preparing for my talk with you today, I've asked God to help me remember. I'm going to share something personal, something that has controlled the way I've thought about myself most of my life. If I had known then what I know now, my life may have been very different. And I'm going to share this because just maybe somebody in this room will relate to what I'm going to say. I'd like to start uh, by reading two scripture verses. The first is Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. The Lord says, for I know the plans I have for you. I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. And John 8, 36, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I'll start at the beginning. I was born in Pennsylvania. My parents were English, loving parents. I was an only child, and I went with them to an Episcopal church. When I was 12, I moved to England and lived there for 10 years. And when I was there, I attended the Church of England. At that point in my life, I had no personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and I really I had no understanding of what that meant. Early education in Pennsylvania indicated that I had difficulty in learning, poor memory, I felt dumber than the rest of the kids. Education in England, I was not accepted at a grammar school, which at that time was equivalent to our high school plus two years of college. Uh, and I went to a secondary modern school, a lower academic level school, which I completed at age 15. I knew that I had not received a good education and felt even more like an educational failure. When I was 18 years old and still living in England, I joined the United States Air Force for four years and was very aware of my educational deficiencies. In the Air Force, I was trained to be a dental lab tech. 
Uh, I had a strong drive at that time to be successful in life. With my exposure to dentistry, I decided I wanted to be a dentist, realizing it would not be easy. After three years in the Air Force, I was promoted to Staff Sergeant, and uh, during my fourth year, Vera and I were married. During that year, I enrolled in the University of Maryland Overseas College Program and began taking college courses. They were not easy for me. I was discharged from the Air Force in 1956, and we moved to Richmond, and I applied and was accepted at the University of Richmond. There was no good reason why I should have been accepted <laughs> at the University of Richmond. Uh, but Dean Raymond Pinchback said, we'll give you a try. I had decided I wanted to be a dentist, and my years at the U of R were very difficult. I was a chemistry major, and so as to fulfill my requirements for entrance to dental school. And I found that all science came hard to me. During my sophomore year, the Department of uh, Psychology offered a vocational aptitude test to all sophomores. The results of that test indicated that I not be involved in anything in the field of science. <laughs> Well, that did not do too much for my self-confidence. Uh, I, I did have real concerns as to whether I should change my major. Something, or should I say someone, would not allow me to change my mind. Also, my wife was a very strong support. And without her strength, I'm not sure uh, what I would have done. While at the U of R, I repeated more classes, went to more summer schools, until I finally graduated. I'm not sure who was the happier to see me go, <laughs> me or the U of R, but I can guess. Finally, I was in dental school, and I thought, now everything would be fine. Well, I failed Dero Anatomy my first year, and that meant that to stay in dental school, I would have to repeat my first year. This was another setback, and I really struggled with the, the idea of giving up dental school. I made the decision to repeat the year, and it was a good decision. Each year after the first one was better than the one before. Life has been good to me and my family, and as a dentist, I have been given opportunities to provide services that I may not have otherwise had. It wasn't until I, I had been out of school and in practice for a few years that Vera and I both realized that we had something missing in our lives. Vera realized it before me, that's surprising. <laughs> that's a, uh, <clears throat> uh, and that's something is Jesus. She first accepted Jesus as her personal Savior, and after six months of living with a new woman, I wanted the same relationship for me. Life after has been wonderful, but that's not to say without challenges. Difficulty in early years can often prepare you for things to come later. I believe God allows things to happen in your life, but when you are walking with Jesus, he will always give you the resources to cope with the situation. It may not be the way you want it, but if you look close and wait, you will usually understand why. One of our children got involved with drugs during teenage years. This was very difficult to deal with. Looking back, we see that God was very much in charge of this whole situation. And from a very ugly experience, he brought victory in many ways. And one was to build a parent group organization that brought drug education to literally thousands of parents.